Um, we're going to talk about PDF standards and um, what we thought was to make this uh, do this a little differently than the standard presentations we've been giving uh, for uh, quite a bit and try to summarize as much useful information is as little in as little slides as possible. And um, what it also means is that we won't we won't talk about everything. We've we've done a uh, kind of a summary of what we what we think is the most important. But don't let that stop you. And if there is something you want to ask, just speak up and ask, and we will be more than happy to uh, to go into that. So very briefly, this is what we're going to talk about: um, PDF, ISO, Gantt War Group, and then uh, one standard to. Um, it's not really that, that but we'll see. Uh, one standard to, uh, to to rule them all. But let's start by um, introducing the speakers to you. And as you uh, as you will see, I have uh, used the uh, new uh, very uh, funny four piece uh, house style uh, for everything. So. Our first speaker is a green Spider-Man called Christian. Christian, please <laughs> introduce yourself. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah, and the Spider-Man is resting, so that means that you are going to do most of the presentation. Um, so I'm Christian Blaise, I'm working for Four Ps um, for quite a while now, and uh, I'm actually uh, taking care of the professional services and support at uh, 4 Peace. Um, I'm a member of the GAN work group as well. So I think it, it, it's worth mentioning it uh, now, um, being um, uh, one of the chairs of the packaging group and also um, uh, being marketing officer of the GAN work group. And, uh, I'll be today one of your hosts, and maybe if you don't give enough interaction, so don't 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 go there, please, <laughs> please don't go there. I'll have to ask dumb questions and 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 play the dumb client to um, give some hints for uh, David to give the answers. Cool. So uh, my. Uh... Then it's my turn. So I'm the, the other speaker. Uh, apparently, I have something with pink, which is strange. Uh, given that I made the presentation, there is not much I can I can uh, I can't complain about it too much. So um, my name is David, as I think most of you know by now. Um, I'm the CTO of Four Ps, which for a small company means that I do uh, just about anything that is necessary, but mostly on the technical side. Um, at the moment, I'm technical, no, I'm executive director of the Gantt Work Group. I'm also co-chair of the specification subcommittee and the process control subcommittee. And I think my, my co-chair is, uh, is also in the audience actually, uh, at least one of my co-chairs. Um, and um, I think that's it. So let's get uh, let's get this show on the road. Uh, this shouldn't take very long. Uh, I think we we haven't tested it, so it's a bit dangerous to say it's not going to be long. We haven't tested it, but uh, I, I I think the number of slides is quite reasonable. We'll see how uh, how long it takes. Let me get started. Um, if I can go to the uh, the next one. So. We're, we're going to kind of take subjects in, in, in order. And if you talk about standardization and standards, then you, you kind of have to start with, uh, with PDF because that is the, 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 the base of everything else. That's what we, what we by now build everything else on top of, right? So we have to start with, uh, with, with PDF and then uh, let's see if we can get someone in the audience actually uh, speak up or agreeing. Um, so then the question is who owns PDF? And this is not a, not a given I, I found out. I mean, if you, um, if, if you look at, on online forums and so on, um, then it is far from the case that everyone knows what is going on in this space, even for something as basic as, uh, as PDF. 
as I experienced on the Quark Express forum last week, uh, where uh, the answer was definitely not correct. So who owns PDF uh, at the moment? Come on, please, guys. Speak don't, up. <laughs> don't make me find a Chinese volunteer. Uh. Oh, some, somebody answered in the, in the chat. I got an answer that says Adobe. Um, I, I got I got one that was Microsoft. <laughs> so that was yeah. So yes, we are nobody open standard now. Uh, no one, and somebody says it is an ISO standard. Yes, and that of course is the correct answer. Um, and... you won. Hmm? Christoph, Christoph gave the, the correct answer. Yeah. Something. So the surprising thing is that there are still people who think that, and I, I don't want to single anyone out, uh, Bartosz, but there are still people who, um, who believe that PDF is owned by Adobe, uh, which is no longer the case. Uh, of course, when it was invented, it was Adobe who invented it. And maybe that is the source of some uh, confusion as one of the founders of Adobe just passed away uh, not that long ago. And then there was a lot of talk about the invention of uh, him having invented PDF and, uh, and so on. Um, of course, Adobe invented the format um, um, a long time ago, but they decided that at some point to hand it over to the ISO or the International Standards Organization. And the, the reason for that, well, it, it was kind of timely because we already, by that time, we already had started to, to build other ISO standards on it. And it was kind of unheard of to have an ISO standard that was built on something that was proprietary to a company. So Adobe finally decided to make PDF also an ISO standard, and in that way, the problem was uh, was was resolved. It also has the the nicest number for any ISO standard that I know, which is ISO uh, thirty two thousand. Yeah. Uh, but so, uh, if someone asks who owns uh, a PDF, it is no longer Adobe; it is ISO. Uh, it is also ISO who decides what the new features are going to be in upcoming versions. Yeah. And, and I think course... it, it, it might be worth it to, to mention that even though uh, PDF was owned by Adobe because Adobe invented it and was deciding what, what to put in there, uh, PDF has always been an open uh, uh, specification like uh, anybody can have access to uh, the specification and do something with it, build a tool, a reader, writer, whatever. And it, it never has been a proprietary format that was kind of a, you know, best known secret. Yeah. Um, of course, now it's no longer absolutely free anymore in a way, because if you want the specification, you have to go to the, uh, the nice people at ISO. Uh, who have their headquarters, if I'm not mistaken, in Switzerland. And of course, uh, that means you have to buy the standard. And because it's in Switzerland, it's very expensive. Sorry, Stefan. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, you're absolutely right. The format is still uh, is still open. You can you can do with it whatever you want. So you can anyone can implement a, a competitor to Adobe Acrobat, and that has always been the case. Uh, and actually, there are a few. Um, maybe not so much in graphic arts, but certainly outside, there are quite a few com competitors to uh, to Adobe Acrobat that focus on doing different things with PDF. Uh, so not Adobe anymore, but ISO is the owner of uh, of PDF, which brings us to um, ISO. What would ISO do? ISO would make lots of standards based on, uh, on PDF. And um, I, I've listed a whole bunch of them here in more or less chronological, actually in chronological order, I believe. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, 
let's do one of my uh, one of my favorite things and uh, and see where what these things mean. Yeah. So first of all, which of these is not an ISO uh, standard? There is one. So you can unmute yourself or use the chat. Somebody says VCR. Yeah, many people say VCR, but that's not correct. No, it's Betacam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, have, we have two good answers for Marcel yes. and Stefan, PDFH. Yeah, so PDFH, uh, you explained it, Christian, what it is, because I, uh, I mixed it up when we prepared this presentation, so it's too long ago already. Uh, yeah, PDFH is actually, this is a standard. This is not a, a NISO standard, but this is a standard. And this says, um, this comes from uh, 208. So it's earlier than when it's placed here, but it's for healthcare. And actually this is a, a way of exchanging, you know, medical data between the different stakeholders. Uh, this also has to do with, um, with another standard that was developed for the uh, healthcare uh, business. Uh, healthcare business, that doesn't work together, but anyway, depends on which country you are, um, uh, which, which uh, is called um, DICOM, which is a, a standard for the images. And then on top of that, using DICOM and, and, and other uh, things is a way to exchange like, you know, uh, diagrams and pictures and some information. Um, so this is a standard, this is a quite old standard, but it's not an ISO standard. Yeah, so all the rest is ISO standards, but PDFH is, uh, is not. So let's, uh, let's take that one step further. The, uh, the PDFX comes from what? The X comes from? That is a classic one by now. Everyone should know that. Uh, yeah, exchange. Uh, in, in fact, PDFX in, in its title originally had blind exchange. Yeah? Uh, it's very logical to have the, uh, the X come from uh, exchange, <laughs> of course, especially because this was the first standard. So they could have used any letter uh, that, they, uh, that they wanted to. Could have been PDF B. That was nice. B for you know B E <laughs> blind. <laughs> yeah, that would be even more <laughs> more confusing. Uh, but PDFX, and that was the first one that was that was made, and it was uh, also the, uh, well for graphic arts, of course, because we're still using it uh, today. So PDF A, A from I. No one dares to talk to us. Uh, that is very surprising. Uh, we're, we're not that bad people. Um, so yes, uh, PDF A from uh, archival, archiving, uh, archive, whatever you want to call it. It is the, um, the, the long-term archival format. And one of, the, one of the interesting things to know is that um, this is a standard that never expires. Um, and I was told that it's the only uh, ISO standard that never expires because, well, given the fact that it's about long time archival, that's kind of logical. But most other standards have to be renewed or confirmed or updated once every uh, so, so often uh, because things change and technology gets older and so on. But PDFA is a bit of an exception uh, for that. Five years uh, we got from uh, Stefan. Uh, every five years, huh? it has. To, we have to do something uh, for it. Uh, but uh, um, so we're not going to, going to talk about the most of these standards anymore. Once we've positioned them a little bit, uh, we are going to talk about PDFX. But it's uh, it's interesting to see where that lives in the in the whole universe of uh, of things. So PDF E with the E of what does the E stand for? Yeah, engineering, that is absolutely correct. Um, what I think I remember is that uh, PDFE was going to be uh, withdrawn or at least merged into uh, another standard. Um, but the original intention at least was to make it possible to, for example, also have 3D engineering drawings and stuff like that in the, uh, in the PDF uh, file. 
which is not allowed, at least in PDFX. I'm not sure about PDFA, but I don't think it's allowed either. It's too difficult. Yeah, it looks like uh, PDFA was going to be merged with PDFA. With PDFA, uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, um, okay, uh, PDFVT is a graphic arts standard. The question is, what does the V and T stand for? Because that's obviously not just one word. Yeah. Yeah, but that's only the V, uh, Jan, so that, that only gets you half a point, uh, I'm afraid. Yes, so uh, the V comes from variable data, the, the T comes from um, transactional, so variable and transactional. If you're not familiar with the term, transactional is the kind of stuff that wants you to pay things, so uh, people sending out invoices for cell phone usage and, and things like that. Um, um, okay, so uh, let me jump a little bit and uh, go to uh, VCR, which people thought was the, uh, the fake one. Uh, what does the VCR stand for? And there is a reason I'm asking it together with, uh, yes, that, that was obviously prepared. Uh, so VCR stands for variable content replacements. Uh, whomever came up with that name must have been a very funny guy. I don't, I don't know who it is, but it's, um, it's a cool name. Um, but both of them talk about variable. It's not video cassette recorder, no. <laughs> um, both of them talk about variable data. Can anyone explain what the difference is between the two then? Because there are two clearly different um, ISO standards. So what is the difference between VCR and, uh, and VT? <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I specifically tried not to make the Betamax joke. So thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> no one? <laughs> So VT, let, let me, do you know, Christian, what the difference is? Um, yes, because just Stefan uh, wrote in the, in the chat, so. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, this is, and this is an interesting one because uh, for a lot of people, when we talk about VT, they really have the feeling that this is, because you have viable into the name of the standard, they really think it's viable, but, the PDF that is PDF VT, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is not viable anymore. This is taken from viable, and then that makes the uh, the PDF um, from that use of the viables. Where in the VCR, this is where you still have some dynamic uh, process where you actually are uh, um, injecting, uh, I would say, the viables uh, once you're imaging the PDF. Yeah. Um, if I paraphrase what uh, Dov Isaacs from Adobe explained at one point is that PDF VT is simply an optimized PDF file uh, that has been optimized so it can be printed very quickly. But uh, like you said, there is no real, it, it's not like you still have to put variable information in there. It's already there. Uh, so PDF VT files, you would easily end up with files that contain a million pages if we're talking about invoices, for example. They just have been optimized and they have been optimized by, for example, uh, making sure that the background images only appear uh, once and that they can be cached correctly by the RIP in order to speed up uh, print and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's not that you can use PDF VT uh, in order to then do uh, variable data substitution in a file. It's not a template, uh, which is a, a mistake that, that is very often made in, uh, in this context. And VCR uh, did try to do that. So there you have the, um, the possibility to merge it with a, a data source. The PDF VT works better with imposition than, than VCR, I think. Um, VT would be the, uh, the optimized file. So if you want to impose that, that should not be any problem. Uh, oh, but I mean, it, it's, it's uh, for the processing. If you have the VT, you can process it out to, to an imposed sheet. 
yes. with all the variable data printed on, on each sheet. But, but if in the VCR, you, you do it in the RIP, so that, that's right. a different thing. Correct. Correct. Uh, also, I, I think there is, well, I'm actually not sure. I was going to say there is more support for VT because it's an older format, but I think in reality, there is not that much uh, support for, uh, for VT. Uh, what a lot of RIPs seem to have done is optimize print times for properly formatted PDF files, even if they're not VT, if they are created in the correct way uh, by reusing images, which is something PDF allows you to do anyway, then they, they work already much faster. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a VT file for that. Okay, and then the last one, PDF UA. The UA comes from, that should be uh, a, a reasonably, there we go, a reasonably simple one. So universal accessibility. So this is a, an accessibility standard. Uh, it is very similar in many ways to PDF A, but saying that is a bit of a, a moot point because all of these standards, um, uh, well, they all start to, to resemble each other uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, they are at least share a lot of uh, common rules, let's say. Correct, yeah. Um, there are differences, uh, and the, the, the difference between PDFA and PDF uh, UA, for example, Asha, is that, uh, Asha, sorry, is that you have. Um, how is it again in PDF A, for example, uh, you need structure in the file. Uh, in PDF UA, you also need to identify uh, what, uh, what the language is that is being used. That is one of the differences because we're talking about screen reading devices. Uh, so software needs to be able to read uh, a PDF file. And in order to do that properly, you need to know what the language is that is used for particular uh, types of, um, of, of text. But the big difference from, um, from a conceptual point of view is that in PDF A, you have a number of um, very simple rules that say this has to be there, that has to be there, that has to be there. In PDF UA, the rule says this has to be there and it has to be good. And that is kind of, it's, it's kind of a, a quantitative rule or a, a, not quantitative, qualitative, I guess. Yeah. Um, so a qualitative rule, which is very, very difficult also for pre-flight software. You can't really pre-flight a PDF UA file or all aspects, aspects of PDF UA file. Uh, you almost all, always need human verification of what yeah. is in there. Yeah, this is a post-processing that is actually called remediation. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, because it's so far, it's still very difficult for automation or tools to, to get like a completely 100% uh, file that is completely correct. Um, so we still need humans, which is good. So good, good example perhaps is um, if, we, um, if we would turn this presentation into uh, a PDF UA file, then you, you could mark all the texts as, as English. Um, you could also mark all the text as Russian. And uh, for a PDFA file, that would be a perfect PDFA file. The information is there. Uh, in a PDF UA file, uh, it, it should not pass as a good PDF UA file because while the, the, the language tagging is there, it's not correct. It doesn't correspond to the actual language that is in the file. So. A PDF UA verification should fail it, but of course you can you can understand that for pre-flight software, for example, that is really difficult. Uh, and the same goes for images. You need description of images, and the PDF UA standard says that the description needs to really match what you see in the image and the intent of the image, and that is something that software can simply not 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 check all that easily. Although Google gets better at it. <laughs> Hi everybody, sorry to disrupt, but I'm having really struggle, a struggle understanding the difference between those two. Um, so the PDF A is correct while the PDF UA isn't or vice versa. Yeah, so if I would make a, a PDF from this presentation and we tag all the text as English for PDF A, that would be absolutely fine. Yeah? Okay. 
um, because the only thing that can, that that PDF A cares about uh, it depends on the flavor, but let's not get too. Uh, <laughs> but what what PDF A mostly is concerned about is if I open this PDF file again 50 years from now, it has to look the same, and I have to be able to use it in the same way. It doesn't really care all that much about the actual content or or the meaning of uh, the stuff in there. PDF UA, um, the meaning is very important because if you give this to someone who is is vision impaired uh, and software has to read the the alternate description of an image, for example, then that description would better be reasonable or good because otherwise uh, that person is going to have a problem. Yeah. So PDF UA is a much more difficult standard to verify. And if you would look at PDF Toolbox, for example, there is a PDF A profile and that will just do a full PDF A check, no problem. There is also a PDF UA profile, but that is all, always only going to be the first step of the verification. After that, you need to make sure that the information that you have in there is correct. But in the PDF UA, for all those description of images, is there a standard specification what it needs to include? Um, it says that it has to be good enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like it, um, there are, it's it's more like you know it's a guideline or you know kind of best practices where you explain. I've it read it, I've said it, it, but it's kind of hard to understand the difference between those two. Yeah. But that's why I said it's a qualitative standard, which is really strange for an ISO standard. Normally, ISO standards are, are very exact and you have to be able to, to interpret them without any, any doubt. Here, um, there, is, there is a description of what you should do, but it's, yeah, what is good enough? I mean, if, if, if it's a picture of a tree and I just tag it with tree, is that, is that good enough or, or not? Yeah, technically, you could argue, yes, but it's not enough. You know, the image has to be fully described. In, it, in it, the yeah. Eyes, in the yeah. You also have to focus, it's more than only fully described. You have to focus on, on what is important on an image. Like you have, it's, it's a document about dogs and you have a picture of a dog and a, and a tree. Let's, for example, then you have to focus more on the dog than the tree for that image, because that's the part that you want to show um, and, and these are the kind of thing. Uh, I think that the easiest way to understand um, a file that is failing is uh, basically just using a wrong uh, language in your document and then ask for text to speech. We've done that, having like, you know, uh, uh, an English text being read by a text to speak in, in French or the other way around. It's always funny. But it's just funny because here, you know, it's like you want to play joke, but if you're visually impaired and you really rely on that to get the information that that might be a, a huge problem. Basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's very subtle. I understand the problem that you're having with it. It is very subtle because if I have, a, I, I, in another presentation, I had a, a really good example. It's a picture of the Eiffel Tower and there is an American Jeep in front of it with two soldiers. And so you could say, I'm going to tag this and I'm, I'm just going to tag it a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And technically that is correct, but the context where it, where it is used is the, the victory of the allied forces over, um, over, over Germany at that point, it's World War II related. And so if you really want to understand why that picture is used and why it is in that particular place in the document, you have to give that context because other, otherwise someone who is vision impaired and just hears that description is not going to understand why that picture is there. So it's a very subtle thing, unfortunately. Yeah. And again, like you said, this is really weird that this is an ISO standard then. Hey, you have to do something with it. Uh, but uh, what, what Stefan says is also true. Uh, Stefan, you can explain if you want. I'm, I, I don't know that much about the Matterhorn protocols. I know that it's a, it's a description of things that you should have in a, in a PDF UA file. Uh, but if you know, if you can explain better, then feel free.
Yeah, that's a thing which is in, in some point almost similar to what we did at the Gent Workgroup with the PDFX specification. It adds additional criteria to PDF UA on things you, you have to be conformant and, and things you, you can be conform. So it's, it's about I don't know, almost 100 rules for PDF UA files and, and, and how to create them properly. Because the, the, as you said, the ISO standard is not that specific uh, for that. Uh, however, there is a big difference between uh, PDF A and PDF UA. PDF UA is not only about structure, but also about semantic. While PDF A doesn't care about the semantic. Thanks. And I guess that the name is because this is coming from Switzerland, right? Uh, the Matron protocol, yes, because one of the driving forces was a, a, an association in Switzerland called Access for All, yeah. and they did that uh, as a uh, in a working group of the PDF Association. It's published by the PDF Association. Okay, thank you. And they are also the ones who have the, the verification tool. Uh, yes, that's coming from the same uh, same association. Yeah, I thought so. Switzerland, as I say. Yeah, all good things come from Switzerland, except from beer, chocolate, and some other things. Those come from. I don't agree with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with for beer. <laughs> I'll move on because we're not going to resolve that point. <laughs> um, here you have the, uh, the, the 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 names again, except for the intruder in here, which is the uh, the, the healthcare one. Um, you also have. Um, the official name of each of those. I, I, I don't remember any of these numbers, but these are the official numbers for all the, the standards. The nice nicknames. Yeah. Um, we should probably mention it's only part of it, and that will become much more clear with the next slide. Um, you, have a, uh, you have the number here, but if we focus on PDFX, uh, well, Sorry, I also had the uh, the dates that they were invented, uh, because that's kind of relevant. And before we talk about PDFX, I should at least mention that uh, this goes back to 2001, you could say 2003, because there was a revision. But still, I mean, this standard that is used uh, very much by, uh, by all of us is um, dates, what, almost 20 years uh, already. Yeah? So it's not that this is uh, that this is very modern stuff in most cases. The most recent one is is VCR, and I was surprised to see that uh, that already goes back to 2017. I thought that that was more recent. But okay, so um, let's go to PDFX uh, for a second. What I uh, what I would say, uh, or what I wanted to say, was that that number that you saw there. What is it? Nineteen. Uh, already forgotten. Uh, uh, the, the number that you have there, uh, normally you would add a dash and then um, a, uh, a, a, a further designation, a part number. Uh, because it's not just PDFX that was invented by ISO. ISO invented a whole long list of uh, PDFX standards, yeah? starting with 1A. And then the question is, what happened to 1? It was, it was a difficult birth, let's put it that way. Um, the, the first one that was officially adopted uh, was, um, was called PDFX1A. And then you have PDFX2, which is no longer a PDFX standard. It has been withdrawn. And then you see the whole other uh, list. And you may have used various ones in there. Uh, you'll also see that they try to make it as difficult as possible by doing things like PDFX5, PG and, and stuff like that. Um, I have to admit that I don't know what all the sub things uh, are, are used for either by, uh, by heart. I had to look it up and, uh, to make sure. Yeah. Um, but of course, showing you this is, is perhaps not the, uh, not the ideal. So which one of these should we remember? I, I have three that I selected as the, the important ones uh, to uh, to remember for the future. 
if it were you, which ones would you keep from all of that? Uh, well, here I get one, eight, three, and four. I would not agree with that. Uh, but well, <laughs> anybody else? Not and of course, there are different reasonings you can have, but uh, one, of four, and six. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely 1A. Let's let's agree on that. Yeah, that's an easy one to agree on. 1A is is definitely an important one. It's it's also a bit painful to uh, to to agree on that because this is the one that dates back to 2001 or or 2003, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so it's a quite old standard. Um, I used to say two years ago that uh, that 1A was the most used standards still I don't know whether that would still be the case I think that has changed meanwhile but it is definitely still used in, in many yeah. cases yeah. so one a I, um, I I agree on um, the second one I selected was pdfx4 so I think there we are in agreement as well uh, and that is because uh, as, as Stefan mentions here as well, uh, 1A if you want is a, a subset of, of 4, uh, whatever you want to do in 1A you can also accomplish in, in 4. There are still differences of course, PDFX4, um, under, well, it allows things that are difficult, yeah? like transparency, um, like uh, all kinds of uh, strange color spaces and stuff like that and those are not allowed in uh, in in 1a so from a complexity level they're not exactly at the same uh, on the same footing but yes i agree 1a and 4 and then i would not choose 3 and because that is because i'm in belgium i don't know but i would not choose 3 what i would choose um, as the third one is bfx6 and that is because if you look at where we are going then PDFX6 in all likelihood is, well, not, not even in all likelihood, PDFX6 is the one that we're going to uh, eventually. Yeah. Um, what is different or very different with PDFX6? Does anybody know that? We have some experts here, you should know this. It's not a trick question for once. Ta -da! Yes, exactly. Good answer. Yeah, so what we haven't talked about, but you probably have heard at some point, is that uh, we said PDF is an ISO standard. It is uh, ISO 32000. The original uh, ISO standard to run PDF was 32000-1, part one. Yeah. Um, there is meanwhile a dash two, so an updated version of the uh, PDF format standard and PDFX6 is built on, um, uh, on PDF 2.0. And that is one of, the, one of the nice differences. Other than that, I think uh, everything else that is being said is probably also true, uh, right? Uh, is there any software creating it already? Does anybody know of software that could create PDFX6? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think so either. Um, I think you can convert to PDFX6 with PDF Toolbox, for example, but that's a bit yeah. of a strange yeah. case. So you cannot create a PDFX6 out of the box from the uh, authoring application, as far as I know. But then afterwards, when you have a PDF, you can convert that using a PDF toolbox, as an example, to make a PDF X6 file. Yeah, so when will vendors support it? That's a good question. Uh, as always, a lot of the stuff is, uh, is chicken and egg, right? I mean, someone has to be the first to support it, but other people don't feel like they have to support it because no one creates it anyway. Um, so there is always a bit of a, a hesitation in adopting it. Uh, what, I, uh, what I would think is that once you start seeing real business cases to use it, people who want to do things that aren't possible with PDF 1.0 and, and PDF X4, for example, then you'll start seeing it, it much more. 
Uh, and one of the things that was mentioned here uh, is probably a good candidate for that. And that is that you can have different output intents for different page ranges. Uh, and that is really cool. So that would mean, for example, that I can have uh, the PDF for a book and I could, uh, well, first of all, I could use uh, what is a dpart uh, metadata to tag certain pages as the cover and other pages as the inside of the book. And then I could also have different output intents for those uh, page ranges so that you can, you can identify that they have to be printed on a different press or on a different uh, paper or something like that. And that is something that you cannot do in, um, in, in, in with PDF 1.0. And so you can't do it with PDFX4. You need PDFX6 for that. So your, uh, your mileage may vary, but if I would have to choose, these are probably the ones that are on the podium. And PDFX4 is, of course, at the top, because uh, if you ask me what, what PDFX format you should use today, I think this is the one, right? Uh, even though not all graphic arts associations would probably agree already, and some are still on uh, PDFX 1A level, uh, I think it makes sense to, uh, to do this on PDFX 4. So, in case you're thinking that PDFX is the ultimate solution, uh, there are a few things that are not in there, like minimum and maximum resolution of images. The, there is no rule in PDFX that talks about this. And neither the about... That, so, sorry, they, that, that one is a very important one because for a lot of people, they really think that, oh, I'm doing PDFX, so I, I won't you know, face any issue. And most of the time when you say to people, oh, I can, you know, make a PDFX 4.5 with images at 12 DPI and it's going to be completely okay and not failing. They're just like, what? But that's actually true. Yeah, absolutely. No rule at all. Um, same for a number of pages. That's perhaps less of a problem. But I think this one is an important one as well. In coverage, there is nothing in PDFX that talks about that. So uh, there is no, not really anything about it. Same with uh, small text or hairlines. Uh, same with the size of different boxes, of course. Uh, there, there is nothing that talks about um, how, how big does the trim box need to be? There are some rules about boxes. For example, you can't have an art box and a trim box at the same time, or they have to be nested properly, but nothing on, on format of, uh, of things. Nothing about spot color. Um, and uh, some other nasty things that you can do in, in PDF are not covered, uh, not covered either in, uh, in there. Yeah, if, if I'm not mistaken, David, originally PDFX has been really invented of just like if you have a workflow, you don't want your workflow to be at some point stuck because, you know, it's blocking your rip or whatever. But if like uh, you get bad quality, then you print bad quality and this is it. I mean, it's garbage in, garbage out. But it was really, the intent was really, I don't want to lose time because my file is stopped somewhere. Yeah, um, and also this is this is for the whole graphic arts industry. So how can you put minimum resolution on in a PDFX standard if you're going to use that across, I don't know, glossy magazines on the one and and billboards next to a highway on the other end? I mean, in the first example, you need 150, maybe 300 DPI. In the second example. 25 might be more than sufficient. So these yeah. things cannot be added to something that spans the whole industry. Yeah. Well, wasn't the PDFX one from the start intended as a uh, advertising format for, for newspapers? The original work was, um, was done for that. I think yeah, it comes from uh, some of, some of the original people who worked on it were organizations that worked on it was, for example, DDAP, which is the digital, the digital distribution of advertising for printing or something like that, but uh -huh. an American group. 
Um, and they had a focus on, uh, on, on advertising. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because in Sweden, it took a long, took a while before, before PDFX got, uh, got any notification because they had, we had already in 96, 97, some kind of EPS advertising standard. Yeah. Uh, so we, we sent EPS files. Uh, so, so, and that, that was so, so uh, well connected to Cork Express 3 as well. And since that one could, couldn't make any PDFs back then, the PDF X1 didn't catch on here. But I do think... Um, because a lot of newspapers were still on PDF 3, uh, Cork Express 3.1, because they were angry with, with Cork, so they didn't upgrade. And, and they couldn't make any decent PDFs from that. So that, that's why they did that. So that EPS standard kept, kept on going for at least to 2004, 2005, something like that. But when PDFX was was converted to an ISO standard, the scope was wider than, than yeah, just yeah, yeah. advertisement. Uh, it did originate there. Um, uh, I, I've actually been and, and at some of the, the the either DDAP or the there was something called the Kensington Group at some point, and that was the name of the hotel room we were in. It's stupid things, uh, like the Gantt Work Group. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let's call it the Gantt Work Group. Um, yeah, I mean, since, since it was for advertising, it was uh, that was why it was only CMYK as as well. So, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a real drive to make it uh, to make it as simple as possible as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because the problem they had was was like you said, is exchanging advertisements between different countries. For example, uh, was a real here in Europe was a real problem. That's yeah. where the Gantt Work Group started, by the way, as well. Is uh, the the exchange of of advertisements? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so even if you have a PDFX file, there is a lot of it, a lot in there that, um, yeah, that isn't covered and that you can't cover in a standard that goes to the whole, uh, the whole industry. And then we get to the, to the Gantt Work Group, uh, talking about uh, organizations with creative names based on where they started. This, uh, of course, qualifies. Um, the, the Gantua group from the, from the beginning identified the need for multiple market segments. And what I've listed here is more or less what we have today. So that is not where we, where we started a long time ago. I say we I identify uh, because I was there from the beginning. Um, I think the, the first ones that we had were where you see magazine and, and newspaper, actually that was magazine ads and newspaper ads, and then the sheet fed offset web offset stuff. Those were the, the original specifications that were uh, created. Yeah. And um, the initial specification was not PDFX compliant. Uh, nobody knows that anymore. Uh, but uh, very, very quickly, there was a very political and very difficult exercise to, uh, to decide that we were going to base this on PDFX, which made a lot of sense in hindsight, but uh, was a bit contended at the time, uh, perhaps. So does that improve things? Um, I would hope so. Uh, because if you do this on a, on a market segment basis, then you can do rules that are specific. If you know that you're going to have, um, that you're going to go to newspaper, for example, then you know what the requirements are for resolution. You also know what the requirements are for total ink coverage. Yeah. Number of pages in document is a bit more difficult because that's, that always depends on, on the kind of thing that you're, that you're dealing with. Um, the Gantt Work Group does have rules on number of pages. Does anybody know in which, in which specifications and in, in what segments? There are two, I believe, that have a rule on number of pages in the document. Yes, I think so. Yeah, two, huh? Yeah, newspaper. And the other one, of course, is then uh, magazine. Uh, oh, so that, that's actually three. Because you also have that on the packaging specs. Ah, but so the packaging one, has, yes, 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 yes. But the packaging one, of course, is much newer than uh, than the original. So you're right. You're right. We have it there as well. I had to say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, but for the majority of, of the, the specifications, uh, we can't. And again, for the same reason, if you're going to sheet fat offsets, 
Um, so you just know that you're going to do things like, I don't know, books, or you're going to do uh, business cards or flyers or whatever. Every product um, has, has a, a different number of pages or can have, so you can't have that as a rule. Um, element sizes, that goes together with that. You, again, you can check on that because you know what you're going to. And probably, I think the last, the, the last um, questionnaire that the Gantua group did on what are the, the major errors that you find in PDF files these days, what typically scores pretty high is people delivering files in the wrong format. That is exactly this, this of course. Um, so different, different trim size than you expect, not having bleed when you need bleed or not enough bleed when you need bleed. And again, this is product specific. It is not something that the Gantua group can put in, uh, in specifications. So it's not covered. Yeah. That's why this one is red and the number of pages one is yellow or depending on your country, yellow, amber or orange uh, in traffic light speed. Uh, mm -hmm. Because at least there is something that is checked but for the, the size of trim box and so on, there is absolutely nothing. Spot colors are also sometimes forbidden. It depends on the, on the market segment. Um, but of course, there are many more things that you could check there that the Gantua group doesn't cover. If you go to packaging, you probably want uh, structural uh, elements like uh, die lines or something in there. And is there anything now in the existing packaging specifications? I don't think so. Huh? No, we, we're only counting the number of spot colors just as an info because uh, it's again too generic, uh, but that can be combined. And that's also part of the things that we're working on GWG next uh, with the uh, processing steps uh, ISO standard. Yeah. So in, in processing steps, you can say that for uh, a cardboard box, for example, at least you need, uh, you need trim and what would it be? You also need fold probably at some point. You can't have a box without folding, right? Normally now, yeah, you have, so you have, uh, you have, yeah, cut and crease and uh, those kind of things. Um, and then some additional stuff is also in there. I haven't listed all of them, but for example, the use of uh, overprint and knockout correctly, if you if you look at, at black objects and white objects, is one of the things that, again, the Gantua group uh, decided to add in many specifications um, that is not covered at all by, by PDFX again. So it definitely improves things. It's, it's not 100%, it's not of course. You can't check everything. And that means that if you work in a, in, 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 a, in a particular company and you have a product that you're going to pre-flight, then um, using something from the Gantua group, but adding your own stuff on top would actually be very smart. Uh, that is what the Gantua group is doing with PDFX. So all Gantua group compliant files are also compliant PDFX files. But then we add additional rules on top of that. And within a company, you can use the same procedure and add your own uh, restrictions on top of what the Gantua group already has. OK, um, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But just so you know that when I said PDFX, there are many different versions of PDFX. You have the same problem here. And the problem is actually much worse yeah, because we have different versions of the specification. And there are really only two that you should remember. And probably you should only remember one, which is 2015. Yeah. But there are different versions of the specification. And like I said, you have different flavors of uh, a specification for different market segments. And that is what you see there. So magazine adds 1v4 is version 1v4. Um, and it is specifically for advertisements used in magazines. Um, I could explain what the 1v4 comes from, but I would rather you, you don't use it anyway. So um, just use 2015. Everyone understands that was released in 2015. So just go to those. That's that's fine. Okay. So, aha. 
let's maybe put it all uh, all together. Um, and this is this is based very loosely on um, on um, questions and forums and and so on that I that I that I see pretty frequently, like uh, a a designer asking, my printer tells me to give them a PDF. I'm not joking. The advice of the printer is give me a PDF. So what should you then give? Uh, as what format should you should you send to to the printer? Does anyone want to uh, to take a stab at that? I would say there are no bad answers, but of course there are. <laughs> PDFH, <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the best answer. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you send to to someone? Uh, what do you do when someone knows only that, uh, yes, so ask the printer, absolutely. The problem is they asked the printer and the printer said, yeah, just give me a PDF file. I'm not saying it's a smart printer, uh, but that's, a, that's real advice coming from the, uh, from the printer. Yeah? And my, I would have a tendency to say, and I would have a tendency to say, if you don't know anything else, Give them a, a Gantt word group sheet fed CNYK. Why? Well, first of all, it's a PDF file. So it's, it's, it's actually in line with what the printer asks. Secondly, the Gantt word group stuff is based on PDF, PDFX. So it's also a valid PDFX file. In fact, the 2015 specifications are based on PDFX4. So it's exactly what we saw at the top of that pyramid, the, uh, the PDFX4 uh, standard. So you've covered that part as well. And then why sheet fed CNYK? Well, it doesn't have to be that one, but if, if, if you don't know anything about um, what is requested, then sheet fed CNYK in the Gantt Group specifications is probably the, the most generic specification that is in there. Yeah? So it still has plenty of, of good checks and, and, and so on in there, but it doesn't have anything. It, it's not like packaging where you have stuff that is very specifically for that market segment. It's a very broad specification. So if you really don't know anything else, 2015 so, sheet fed CMYK. So David, that means that it's probably not the best profile you could use, but it's the safest, let's say. If you use that one, you shouldn't, you know, face any major issue. Uh, although if you have more information, you could find a better one, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously it's not the best one. If you have more information and we'll, we'll come back to that, but if you have more information, you can make a more intelligent choice. Yeah. But if you don't know anything, then doing, uh, doing this is going to be safer than just sending a PDF or, or just sending a PDFX. So it's a really good generic choice. So same question, but now uh, someone asks me, I want a PDFX file. What is the, what is the file we give uh, this uh, fantastic printer? The PDFX? So this one is slightly better than the previous one. Uh, so you, can, you cannot answer PDFH here. I'm very confused. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so what, are, what, are, what were you going to give him? PDFX2? <laughs> yeah. So no, Sam, not PDFH. Um, yeah, actually, uh, th that is not a bad answer, uh, Jan. I think it, it doesn't change, this doesn't change the equation. Uh, if your printer is asking for PDFX, then this still qualifies. Yeah, it's PDFX4, which is PDFX, and it's probably the best one in there, as we said before, and um, you're doing something quite generic uh, again. So yeah, absolutely. So, so here the thing is also, Finally, you give something that is uh, compliant to the request, but even though, I mean, I mean, you give even more than what is requested because then. Yeah, but I think that is also something that, that, that people should, I mean, 
for I, I think for a for a creative for a designer it's of course not easy if you ask the printer you you go through the trouble of asking a printer and then they go like well just give me a pdf file that is that's not the answer you probably want to hear at that point um, and you could just give them whatever pdf file at that point and hope for the best but it's in your own interest to give something that is as robust as possible right? the whole point about pdfx was to make sure that if I give you something, it's going to be printed uh, as is, or at least I will have the highest chance that it's printed in the way I wanted it. That's the correct statement. So why not deliver a PDFX file? And uh, if you're if you can't get any cooperation from uh, from a printer, and yes, if the printer says just give me a PDF. Um, uh, I would probably also go to a different printer. That's uh, that's absolutely correct. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, that was the advice I uh, I wrote there, but it was not an option. So, um, I'll come back on your uh, question, Stephen. Um, let me get through. We have two more questions, and then we're done here. So. Uh, what if someone asks me for a Gantua group read PDF, what do you give me then? Uh, and it should be fairly obvious by now, uh, I would hope. Yeah. Um, anyone wants to guess? Uh, and no, it's not PDF age. So it's the same thing, obviously. I mean, you're, you're, you still don't know what you want. You just know it's Gantua group. Uh, you can just give the same thing. So that, that should have been obvious by now. And what if someone asks me for a PDF for a banner? What do you give them then? Whoever says PDF H now, I'm going to kick out. Don't do it, Sam. <laughs> oh, Stefan, I hope that is sarcastic or ironic <laughs> so the point that that we wanted to make here is that if you know what you what you're working against so if you know that this is going to be for a banner for example then look for a um look for a a, a version in the gantua group specs that is in that market segment at least and for banners there is a large format PDF uh, variant uh, or sign and display. I forget what the final name is that we gave to it. Sign and display, probably. And display, I guess. Yeah. So look for that one and then give them that one because obviously that is going to be a much better match with um, with what is being asked here than than sheet fed offsets. Uh, uh, and in in. Also remember that it's not always about having more restrictions. If you would look at, if you would compare sheet fed offset, for example, with uh, the, the digital print specification from the Gantua group, you would see that the digital print specification contains a lot less restrictions because digital print devices can deal with some stuff that uh, sheet fed offset machine cannot. So uh, it's not always about adding more restrictions. It's often, just doing the things that, doing the checks that make sense. I think that's kind of the, the summary. Okay, um, that is what we wanted to cover. So if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, I am going to go back over them because I think we skipped a few, but maybe not that many. No, I think we have the one from Stephen, but I don't think. Yeah, I have one from uh, Rasha as well. Um, what is the PDFX plus thing? And that is actually a, a good question. Um, it's a term that was invented by um, by Vicky Blake from Infocus at one point. Uh, that goes back a long time. <laughs> um, the the. the the meaning of PDFX plus is that it is PDFX plus compliant plus additional restrictions. Yeah, that's where the plus comes from, which is a bit weird because you could also look, look at it from the other side and say it's PDFX, PDFX minus, you allow less than what is in PDFX. But 
Um, so if you if you build this pyramid at the bottom, you have PDF. On top of there, you have PDFX, which is a little bit more restricted. And on top of there, you have PDFX plus, which is more restricted. And those are the Gantua group specifications. Yeah. And then a company could put an additional layer on top because they add additional restrictions on top of that. That's where the, ter the term PDFX plus um, comes, comes from. So it's, it's not really an equivalent with Gantua group. It could be a printer profile that is PDFX plus a bunch of other stuff, uh, but that's where it comes from. So it's just a common name. It's not yeah. sort of like a standard or, or a... yeah. But and, and that is that is sometimes very confusing. There is another very good example. Uh, if you go to the Netherlands and you you ask what kind of PDF you have to supply, then they will tell you a certified PDF. And what they mean by that is a Gantua Group compliant PDF. Yeah. Certified PDF is a term. It is a term that Enfocus invented um, around a patent uh, for PDF files that has my name on it, actually. Um, but in the Netherlands, it's used as an equivalent of Gantua Group compliant, and that kind of muddies the waters a bit. But yeah, PDFX Plus is just a, a, a way to refer to files that are a little bit more restrictive than PDFX files. Um, what about customer supplied PDFs created from uh, MS Word? What about them? Uh, they're supposed to be good PDF files, no? Um, you have to deal with them, meaning pre-flight them and see whether they are good or not. Uh, I think one of the, I don't know, Christian, I was thinking, well, I, actually, I, I thought about this topic when I was creating this, and I was thinking that years ago, when we talked about bad PDF files, uh, the office generated PDF file always scored very highly. And I was, I was wondering whether that was still the case today. I'm not sure, actually. Um, it's, it's definitely better than it used to be. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's again, that, that depends from uh, which platform you're starting from. Is it Windows or Mac? Are you using like Adobe, um, I mean, generating the PDF through the Adobe technology? Or are you using like uh, the built-in quartz for Metal and those kind of thing? And that can lead to some, you know, differences. Um, the thing is that uh, if you're using uh, Microsoft products, you will end up with uh, RGB files. That's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but but this is something that is quite easy to fix now. Um, even like you know the uh, the 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 black uh, the RGB black. This is this is really easy to be fixed now for already a long time ago. I would say. Um, so if I, if I would ask all of you, the, what are the worst PDF files that you get? Do they come from Office or is it other sources? I heard it's Canva. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the names I had in mind, uh, actually. Or Corel Draw or those kind of stuff. Still Quartz. the Quartz engine? Uh, yeah, the Canva one, when you, when you look online in, uh, in PDF forums and so on, the Canva ones are, uh, are yeah, that, that comes back quite, uh, quite a lot, actually. Um, other PDF engines for automation, what, what does that mean? Uh, you mean things like uh, uh, web shop generated PDF files? Yeah, something like that, and, and, and uh, I uh, ran into some weird PDF the other day with, with uh, that PDF toolbox couldn't handle, couldn't uh, remove the crop marks, but it, it could from uh, Adobe PDFs, mm -hmm. and it, it, it was uh, one of those uh, strange uh, automation office PDF engines. There are a couple of them for automation from, from Officeworks. Um, yeah. 
and they are mainly intended for office PDFs, so they, they don't really do do them properly. But but they are they are used for web shops uh, for print for print uh, work anyway. I mean, where you create your business cards and so yeah. online, which which is the same type of, of thing like uh, the Canva one that we that we are talking about as well. I think that falls. Yeah, so some some bad bad competitors to PDF ship. Yeah, I think that the worst PDFs I got were are, are the the PDF uh, you know for the transactional business where you get things out of an ERP or whatever, and all the pages are you know one invoice against the other and they they collated afterwards and where you end up with a. Uh, 100,000 pages uh, PDF uh, with, uh, you remember that file that we had, it was uh, like uh, 25 gigabytes uh, and having like more than 25,000 fonts into the file and those kind of thing. And this, this is a nightmare. And people from uh, the transactional business, they're dealing with those files like every day. Yeah, but that's because they come from other formats like AFP and, and now want to do things that are more on the marketing side and look nicer and... Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Cool. Um, if there are any other questions, feel free. Um, I think we are done if there are no more questions. That is uh, That took longer than uh, anticipated, but that's not... Uh, that's not bad. Uh, we have another question. Oh yeah, talking about yeah those kind. Ah, uh, iText. text. Yes, yes. You should have added yeah, the kind of uh, tools that are generating the PDF I was just mentioning. Before. Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, but I think that's also because in in, in some cases, um, I I used to read all the PDF questions on Stack Overflow, the, the developer. Uh, website or network and you get people who say oh my boss told me i need to add pdf support by two days from now I'm like okay <laughs> um, and they have no idea what pdf is so um, that is difficult yeah uh, and then you end up with, with that PDF generated his own problem because it, it was an open format with a accessible specification. Anyone can read that and choose to implement just part of it because it was quick and dirty. But then afterwards, you know. Yeah, Canva, that's the one we were talking uh, about. Yeah, I think Canva is the number one in uh, complaints that I see online. Yeah, currently, yes. Definitely. Currently. <laughs> we have a winner. OK, um, thank you all very much for, uh, for participating, listening, and, uh, and being here. Uh, I think we're going to uh, close this down. It's taken long enough. It's time for, uh, depending on where you are, dinner, a drink, or something else. Um, don't forget, next week there will be another Four Piece Cafe. Uh, fourpiece.com slash events will tell you what the full list of topics is, and you can already register. Um, and this one, the video will end up on YouTube uh, once it has been post-processed, which will take a few days. Thank you very much and see you in one of the upcoming cafes, I'm sure. Mm -hmm.